Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp where we are looking forward to learn and understand a lot of fundamental concepts of software testing. We are in chapter 8 talking about quality characteristics testing and continuing ahead with the next segment of it which is 8.5 interoperability testing. The word interoperability certainly talks about operations between more systems. To talk about interoperability testing, it certainly gives you a clear understanding that we are talking about operations between two or more systems. And of course, there it might be necessary to perform this level when you're talking about interacting with any other systems to build a final end product. A very simple example before we talk about the definition as well, that is when you talk about applications like Amazon, applications like Flipkart, do they have anything of their own to make a payment for your shopping? The answer is COD, cash on delivery. Other than that, they do not have any other payment options for you. Or if they don't have the payment gateways, they don't have the integrations and interfaces of several payment options provided by a third party application, they have no options for you to make the payment online and the only option remaining with you for from that platform is the cash on delivery. Now today if you are not using cash on delivery and making use of online payments and making different payments through credit card, debit card, net banking or any kind of online wallets, you are talking about interoperability. Now that's where an application must and should perform the necessary tests required to perform these interoperability tests and make sure the interoperations are comfortable and working fine with the other applications too. So interoperability testing basically verifies the exchange of information or data between two or more applications or systems or even components. The test focuses on the ability to exchange information and subsequently uses the information that has been exchanged. The most important thing is to understand that when we integrate two or more systems to communicate with them, there might be an exchange of data or exchange of information between them. And that is what we validate with help of this particular level. There might be any number of applications which might not interact with any other other application as a part of their integration or may not be integrated at all with other options. In that case, interoperability is just an optional thing or not at all even required. But today, if you talk about any application like Booking.com, Make My Trip or shopping on Flipkart, shopping on Amazon or just kind of like making a payment, right, using a QR scanner, using Google Pay, but you know the scanner, the scanner does not belong to Google Pay, it belongs to Phone Pay, then you are talking about interoperability. The interoperability basically helps you build that interface between two applications where they can communicate with each other. For an instance, if you're shopping on Amazon, you have a checkout value of $1,000 and you go to checkout and proceed to payment. When you proceed to payment, a third party application pops up and says that, hey, I'm your master, I'm your Visa, I'm your Amex gateway or PayPal gateway and you can pay through me. And then they ask you with the same amount with the official credentials of the bank account or credit card details. You enter your authentications, put your OTP one-time password and make the payment and it returns back to the merchant. That is Amazon or Flipkart or Make My Trip. And the flip card acknowledges you that, hey, we have received your confirmation on the same. Now, there are a lot of interfaces which are built, which understands what you did in Amazon before coming to a gateway that is payment gateway. And when you come to the payment gateway and return back to the merchant, the merchant understands that what the payment gateway did was the payment successful or not. This is what we refer to as interoperability or exchange of information and data between two or more applications. Now, testing interoperability must cover all the intended target environments. The most important thing to conduct this is, of course, to check whether the exchange is happening appropriately or not. If in case that is failing, interoperability has found defects. Most importantly, if that works fine, the second major objective of interoperability testing is to make sure that we have tried this application and integration between 
different target environments. The environment here certainly means that it's a combination of hardware, software, middleware, operating system, etc., which consists or comprises of an environment. Now, to ensure the data exchange will work properly in any target environment, we must target different combinations of environment altogether. Now, in, in reality, this may only be feasible for a relatively small number of environments because it's not necessary that you can come up with all possible environments which might be used by your end users. So it is very crucial to shortlist the one, most common used environments and try them out in those environments. Also, in that case, interoperability testing may be limited to selected representative group of environments as well. Now, interoperability relates to how different components and software system interact with each other. The software with good interoperability characteristics can be integrated with a number of other systems without requiring major changes. Finally, testing for software interoperability may, for example, focus on the following design features because we pretty much understand from our previous discussions that most of the quality characteristics heavily rely and depend on the design built for it. So the, some of the design features which we will be looking forward to is use of industry-wide communication standards such as XML because if you're talking about integrating your application like Amazon with that of the MasterCard gateway, Visa gateway, or Amex gateway, or PayPal, or any other thing, they will not change for you. They are built and they have everything what they need to have for any application. If you push them for having any kind of transformation, they would say, sorry, this is what I am. So we should be using the industry-wide design uh, communication standards so that we don't conflict with each other. Otherwise, it's just that you may not be able to use their platform. Importantly, ability to automatically detect the communication needs, to, needs of the system it interacts with and adjust accordingly. That means it should be auto-detectable in terms of communication whenever they are triggered, whenever they are asked. You don't log into PayPal to make a payment on Amazon through PayPal. You don't really have to explicitly go on another tab and log into any of the gateways, right? In fact, you don't have an account on the gateway until unless you are the merchant. So you just have to authenticate from Amazon going to that particular gateway and the gateway gets triggered and recognizes you, hey, you are just trying to make through this card and the card gateway recognizes their card numbers and allows you to perform the payment. Also adding some of the examples here to tell you more about what exactly interoperability, interoperability testing could be all about. And it may be particularly significant for the following examples. One is, of course, commercial off the self, which is COTS, C-O-T-S, and these are the basically intermediate applications like payment gateways. They are not an independent application at all. They are only built to support any kind of e-commerce or online payment collection softwares. Applications based on systems of systems. There are certain applications which do not work alone and they need many other applications to be integrated to be called as an end product. And that's where again systems of systems would need to interact with each other through interoperations. Systems based on Internet of Things, you're talking about any kind of wearable devices like your wearpods, smartwatches. Now you do understand that if you are wearing a smartwatch connected to your cell phone, the communications will be shown on the smartphone without taking out, sorry, smartwatch without taking out your phone from the pocket. No matter where your phone is, right on the smartwatch, you can see all your messages, you can take up a call, you can attend a call, respond to it, and a lot many things can happen. Same way, web services with connectivity to other systems, which we are talking about interfaces. When we talk about booking.com, we talk about uh, make my trip, yatra.com. These applications do not have anything of their own. All they do is trigger, trigger the interfaces with all other airliners and help you collect information back from there and show you the list of all the available flights. This type of testing is performed during component integration testing because there is also an integration between the components testing, uh, so focusing on the interaction of the system with its environment. Also at the system integration testing level, so generally the journey starts from CIT, component integrations, and then you have it at the system level to make sure that the system is ready to be integrated. 
And then comes the system integration level where two systems are integrated to communicate with each other. Now at system integration level, this type of testing is conducted to determine how will the fully developed system interacts with the other. So final check and final testing can happen at system integration level with a full-fledged execution to get the best efficiency and the better defect outcomes. Finally, because systems may interoperate on multiple levels like component integrations or systems as well, we are really responsible to understand that these interactions, uh, what are the interactions and where all it can happen and be able to create the conditions that will exercise the various interactions at the right moment. So we should not be pushing anything for later we should always make sure that we are talking about uh, the right moment in the beginning and allowing you to have everything in place so that you are doing the testing at the right moment. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.